it's Jesse from Bear Flower Farm and I just finished planting out some spring ranunculus seedlings and while I was doing that I storied a couple of things on my Instagram and I got some surprise responses back from certain things I was doing so I thought this would be a good time for me to talk about things that I learned last year that I'm carrying over into this year for growing snapdragons and those lessons might also benefit you too. So if you're new to my channel, I am entering to my second year of cut flower farming. I am located in New Jersey in zone 6B. Last year, I grew something to the tune of around 500 snapdragons. Actually, I might have grown even more than that. Um, a lot of my snapdragons got overtaken by thrips, but at the end of the day, I had a really successful season in terms of being able to grow a pretty looking snapdragon, snapdragons that would have been perfectly adequate to sell if it weren't for the fact that they were overtaken by thrips. So in this video, I want to talk about two main things. I want to talk about spacing and what you may not realize about spacing with snapdragons. Basically, you can cram them in more than you think and two, whether or not you should pinch. So let's get started. Let's start off by talking about spacing. Most of us are growing in six inch squares aided by the Hortanova netting. Now I'm gonna come out and say that some people don't net, some people net. For me, I net because snapdragons are geotrophic and you just don't want that instance where the snapdragons are growing straight, 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 and they're like on the brink of harvest, you get hit by this rainstorm or strong winds, and then they start leaning over. And because they are geotrophic, they are going to continue growing like that. So for me, netting just makes sense, especially for all of the work that you put in for such a small seed and how long it takes to grow to maturity. But the other reason why I like using Horta Nova netting is obviously because it's telling me how I can space without me needing to proactively measure. Now, this is where lesson number one came in. When I was first planting out my Snapdragon seedlings, I was putting in one per square. So every single square is six inches. Then I ended up ordering plugs from Farmer Bailey's because I realized, well, I didn't have enough Snapdragons. And I ordered a tray of, I think it's billed as like 220. And what do you know, when I got those trays, every single plug had at least two Snapdragons in them. I would say most of them had two seedlings. Some of them even had three. And in my head, I was like, there's no way they expect me to actually distangle each plug uh, because the roots were already quite wrapped around each other. And I was like, why would they put two in there if they expect you to only plant one? So upon further research, I realized you can not only put two, you could put three into a single six inch square. So that's what I did. I put the full plug in last year. And what you can see in the first video is that I planted them and you know there's two shoots coming out and they clearly look fine um and they have plenty of space so this time when i was transplanting i did the same thing but because i had one per plug i basically just put two plugs into the same six inch square and spaced them a little bit further apart i also grew of course this the plugs that had the three snapdragons in there and they grew up to be perfectly fine. So if you take a look at this photo over here, I was able to fit 450 seedlings into a three by 35 foot row. That is a lot of snapdragons in a small area. And you know, all of us don't have unlimited space, right? So it's something that I would really consider uh, in terms of just making sure that you're maximizing your space and not just putting in one per square. What I also like about having the two per square is that the, the, the snapdragons are actually supporting each other as they continue growing vertically, which is really, really good. Now, this third video, you can see at this point, they've grown quite tall. They're still sturdy, and it does not look like that one snapdragon is being compromised by the other because of the close proximity. So all that to say, you can squeeze a lot of snapdragons into a really, really small space. So now the next question you might have is, well, does this method only work if you're not pinching? That was the other question that I got asked quite a bit. And the answer is yes and no. So I did not pinch my snapdragons. And this general question of should you pinch or not, I think the answer or 
Yeah, the answer is it depends. So first, you want earlier blooms. Obviously, if you're going to pinch your snapdragons, they're going to take a couple of more weeks to bloom. And in exchange, you get more blooms that, uh, versus just the one. But the other question for you is who are you selling to? In my view, if you're selling to florists, you probably don't want to pinch because you want that straight, long, sturdy stem that you're going to get from not pinching that is going to fetch a higher price per stem. But if you're selling retail market bouquets, that kind of stuff, I would totally pinch. And I would say that I've done both. And both are pretty fine. Um, the ones that I pinch obviously are a little bit less uh, stocky in terms of their stem uh, size and, and diameter, but they're still perfectly usable. They're still perfectly sturdy. And sometimes they are a little bit shorter, but they work really, really well for my market bouquets. Now, what I did last year was I said I got plugs in and I put them straight in and there were two Snapdragons per plug in a six inch square. So I did not pinch those. I let those grow up. I got very, very sturdy stems by early summer. They, for the ones that were not overtaken by thrips, they sold really, really well at the market. And I know that they also would have sold well with the florist. But what I did was because I snipped them, that was basically a pinch. And I kept a good portion of those in the ground over the summer to have a second flush for the fall. And so this goes to answer that second question of, can you actually jam at least two ceilings per Horta Nova square in pinch? And my experience is yes, you can. So you can see in this video over here, I definitely have a ton of Snapdragon that are growing um, and they're growing quite fine. Now I will say that probably about 60% of the stems were long, they were sturdy, they were very usable, they were of florist quality, but there was about 40% where you're starting to get the side shoots going up and they're starting to curve a bit and all that stuff. And I would say that that's less because of a spacing issue and more because there was just so much side growth that was happening that the plant or that the stems were not as straight as if you know there was just one single shoot going up. So I would totally pinch and put two into a single uh, Horta Nova square and, you know, grow, grow like that. Because I think that the worst that's going to happen is that you're just going to have maybe shorter and a little bit less sturdy stems, which is still perfectly usable for most of us since most of us are not just selling to florists, we're also selling for the market. So hopefully this video was helpful for you, especially as you're getting Snapdragons out. One of the biggest mistakes I felt like I made was not maximizing the space that I had. You can see in this photo over here, I, you know, I got Snapdragons out of these and they were perfectly fine, but I could have gotten at least double the amount had I known this earlier. So, um, by the way, I am not the only person who uh, has experienced this. Dave Dowling has also advocated basically three snapdragons per six inches. And he also uh, encourages people to seed three seeds per plug. He went on to a uh, recent or not recent podcast, but it was a podcast a few months ago with Lisa Mason Ziegler. I would definitely recommend checking out that episode if you want to learn a bit more. I also made a more in-depth video on me growing snapdragons from seed last year. And so that is also worth checking out if you want to see just the going from seed to growth and some of the other learnings I had, including the four types of Snapdragon groups that you definitely need to be aware of if you're not aware of yet. And I will link that into the description below. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you next time.